Hello and welcome back to the world of psychology. Rethinking fear and stress. Think of it as an energy. For a very long time, scientists said, stress is one of the worst things you can do to your body, to your health. And there was really good evidence to claim this. There were studies showing that your immune system doesn't work that well under stress. It takes longer to heal wounds. You are more in danger to catch a common cold. And the probability for cardiovascular diseases goes up as well. But new evidence suggests that this is only half the story. Because it seems like that it's not only the amount of stress that you experience, which is bad for you, but it's also your attitude towards the stress. So take a look, for example, at the study by Keller and colleagues published in 2012 in the journal Health Psychology. And the title of the study was Does the perception that stress affects health matter? The association with health and mortality. And in this study with a gigantic sample of 28,753 participants, which were all adult US Americans, they could show that the probability of dying was 43% higher when the participants had said that they were on the one hand very stressed, that they experienced a lot of stress and, and this is the important point, when they were also convinced that this stress that they experienced was bad for their health. At the same time, those participants who also experienced a lot of stress but who were convinced that, well, but this doesn't affect my health, those participants had a probability of dying which was 17% lower. So if you are stressed, it really seems to be important what you think about the stress. And therefore, maybe some of the study results that I named in the beginning, stress is bad for your immune system, wounds heal slower, and you are more in danger to catch a common cold. Those study results of the last years might have promoted this unfortunate belief. So in new studies, scientists try to figure out whether it's possible to change this unfortunate belief system and what might be the positive consequences. And one of those studies is the study by Strack and colleagues published in 2014 in the journal Cognition and Emotion. And the title of the study was Will you thrive under pressure or burn out? Linking anxiety motivation and emotional exhaustion. In the first experiment, they gave a questionnaire to 138 teachers and medical doctors. So this was a sample of people who usually experience a lot of stress and who are known to have burnout quite frequently. And what they asked in this questionnaire was what was their attitude towards stress? Was it more negative? Well, stress is bad for me. It cripples my work performance and it's bad for my health. Or was it more positive? Stress gives me energy. It makes me more active in problem solving. It makes me channel my energy into my work. And one year later, it turned out that those participants who said, well, stress is also helpful, it energizes me, those participants experienced less emotional exhaustion. One could also say they had less burnout symptoms. A second experiment of Strzok and colleagues is even more interesting because in this study they invited 91 students and these students were strongly put under pressure. They were stressed because they had to take an intelligence test, which itself can be a little bit stressful, but they had to take this intelligence test under extreme time pressure. They were told that only the 10 best participants would receive a prize. And during the test, they also received a fake feedback, which told them, 
Well, you're quite close. Keep on going and you will receive the prize. Under such circumstances, people usually feel a little bit emotionally exhausted afterwards. But in one group, the emotional exhaustion was not that huge. And it was the group that was instructed to rethink and to reappraise stress. So participants of this group were told, and now I quote from the study, if you experience stress or anxiety, try to channel or use the energy those feelings may arouse in order to do your best. These participants felt much better after the stressful intelligence test than participants were told, well, if you experience stress or anxiety, try to focus on the task in order to do your best. And they also felt better than a group which was only told, please try to do your best. But rethinking stress doesn't only seem to be beneficial for our emotional well-being. It also seems to improve our performance, for example, our performance at work. And this was shown in the study by Krum and colleagues published in 2013. The title of the study was Rethinking Stress, the role of mindsets in determining the stress response. The study was published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. The participants were 388 employees of a large international financial institution. And to change the attitude towards stress, the employees were sent short, approximately three minutes lasting, scientific videos on stress. They received three videos over the course of one week and so all in all the intervention was quite short. It were all in all just 10 minutes. There were two different versions of the videos. One group of employees received videos with the message stress is enhancing. They were told, just like I told you in the beginning, for a long time scientists believed stress is negative. But today new research tells us that stress can also be helpful. It can be energizing. It makes you more vigilant. Another group of participants were told the exact opposite. They were told, well, for a long time we thought stress is negative. Today we know stress is even more negative. Stress is really debilitating. So these participants must have thought, well, it's probably better to shy away from stressful activities. At the end of the week, the participants had to fill out questionnaires again and among other results, it turned out that those participants who were taught that stress can be enhancing, those participants indeed said, well, this week I was more productive, this week my work performance was better. Now you might argue, well, these study results sound quite interesting, but isn't it problematic that the participants were allowed to judge their work performance on their own? Wouldn't it be better if there were objective raters? You are absolutely right. And therefore, let's take a look at the study from Belzer and colleagues published in 2014 in the journal Emotion. The title of this study was Rethinking Butterflies, the Effective, Physiological and Performance Effects of Reappraising Arousal During Social Evaluation. In this study, 85 participants had to take a very mean social stress test. It's called the Trier Social Stress Test and it's probably one of the meanest tests that psychologists ever invented. And maybe it's no wonder that it was invented by the evil Germans. So imagine you are told by the experimenter, you now have three minutes time to prepare a speech about your strengths and weaknesses. After this three minutes of thinking, well, what could I say? I don't want to give this speech. You enter the room and there are sitting two evaluators and there's also a camera because your speech will be videotaped. 
So you begin to speak about your strengths and weaknesses. And while you are speaking, the two evaluators give you negative feedback. They look bored, skeptical. You see a lot of frowning and you get the feeling, well, somehow it seems like what I'm telling them must be absolute bullshit to their ears. So chances are that you become quite nervous. And this nervousness might even be boosted by the next task, especially if you like mental arithmetic tasks, because next you are told, okay, well, now we want you to count down from 996 in steps of seven. So 989, 982, 975, 968, faster man, faster, go faster. 962, well, that was wrong, we have to start again. And you get the impression as this is videotaped and you receive frequent negative feedback, this is really pure social stress. And to help people to cope with this stressful situation, some participants had received a special treatment. Right before the Trier social stress test, they were told by the experimenters, and now I quote from the study, in stressful situations like public speaking, our bodies react in very specific ways. The increase in arousal you may feel during stress is not harmful. Instead, these responses evolved to help our ancestors survive by delivering oxygen to where it is needed in the body. We encourage you to reinterpret your bodily signals during the upcoming public speaking task as beneficial. And to make this message even more convincing, the participants were also given three scientific articles in which the same message was conveyed. And this reframing, this reappraisal, this rethinking of stress really seemed to have an impact on their performance because when they gave the videotaped performances of their speeches to three independent raters who were blind to the instruction condition, it turned out that the raters said, well, these participants really performed better. They were more able to hold eye contact, they were smiling more, they used more gestures. All in all, their bodies seemed to be more relaxed, they were less tense and more open and more leaning forward instead of leaning back like they would like to run away from the situation. So all in all, their speech performance seemed to be better than the speech performance of participants who were not asked to rethink stress. So all these study results make clear why nowadays cognitive therapy in which cognitive reappraisal plays an important role, cognitive therapy especially when it's combined with behavioral therapy and then we have the probably most effective therapy, the CBT, the cognitive behavioral therapy. These study results tell us that reappraising can have a huge impact, but one has to keep in mind, of course, it's not always as easy as it seems like. It's easy to quote William James who said, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. This really sounds more easy than it is. And for a good reason, in all the studies we discussed, the message that stress can also be energetic and helpful, this message always came from trustworthy scientists. And therefore it was more convincing than when we just try it on our own or if a friend tells you the message. Nevertheless, these study results tell us that it is possible and that the consequences can be great. And in case that you don't want to hear the message from me, from a psychologist, never trust a psychologist, so maybe you find it more convincing what was said in a Batman movie, more exactly in The Dark Knight Rises. And it's the scene in which Batman desperately tries to escape from prison. He tries to climb out towards the light, but he always fails until, until a blind prisoner tells him, and I think this is a really good reappraisal of fear, he tells him, how can you move faster than possible, fight longer than possible, without the most powerful impulse of the spirit? 
the fear of death. <laughs>